welcome to hindi lounge so now this is our episode number 47 and it is a very special uh, episode <laughs> so first uh, let me uh, let me introduce uh, uh, the uh, what the show is and then introduce our special guests for the day uh so now this is hindu lounge hindu lounge is brought to you by hindu pack which is the policy research and advocacy initiative of world hindu council of america that is vhpa uh utsav chakravarti utsava is the executive director of hindu pack and with utsava i am ajay shah and the president of world hindu council of america vhpa and today we have a special special show uh, we usually don't have guests but this is an unusual show because this is an unusual week. Week. this is the week where um, you know in some ways a really historic win for hindus in two places one in chicago where the city council the utterly indophobic and hindu phobic uh, resolution city council resolution in chicago was actually defeated and also uh, this is the week where the new york state senate uh decided to drop the bill that would have marked uh, swastika as a hate symbol and talked about it as a hate symbol in the school so two people uh, who were really really instrumental in bringing uh, the chicago city council resolution to its demise um and rightfully so are with us today and it is a, a, a total privilege for us to have both of them online and i will i will introduce both of them um in a minute and it's a please uh, give your introductory remark and then we'll bring our guests in uh with us today are dr bharat barai dr barai is probably one of the most prominent uh, indian americans hindu americans who uh, has been associated with hindu organizations across the country of all different kind of hindu organizations um and he is an oncologist he heads up a cancer center in indiana and he is also uh, i i remember dr barai was also um uh, you know uh, one of the key organizers when we did the global vision 2000 conference in 1993 and maybe even before that uh, dr barai has been uh, doing all the hindu activities and uh, you know has been associated with uh, vhpa um, he was he was also key to bringing uh, the prime minister narendra modi to us i believe uh, uh, prime minister modi stayed with him in 1993 when he came here uh, to the vhpa program um, i am very active in the hindu community in the chicago area also with us is uh, amitabh mittal ji amitabh ji is um, uh, amitabh ji is the uh, uh, is the general secretary of vhp america i had the privilege of knowing amitabh ji uh, you know from uh, you know from my hindu students council days uh, so i believe uh, he joined hindu students council in 1991 92 time frame uh, you know just a couple of years after we started hindu students council uh, in uh, you know our first meeting being in 89 so uh, it is a and amitabh uh, uh, ji was key to organizing the world hindu congress and uh, today he is with us he was in the ground on the ground in chicago uh, many people who have followed uh, the chicago uh, resolution probably saw his pictures uh, holding the play card uh, in uh, you know in uh, uh, chicago city um, and other places right so uh, uh, very active uh, uh, great uh, great to have both of them here so that i turned you over, over for your introductory remark and then um, you know maybe you can initiate uh, you can give a little bit of background on the uh, on the topic and then uh, ask questions of our special guest today but so now over to you well thank you ajay bhai and uh, thank you for the introductory remark i think uh, you left little for me to introduce uh, from here onwards uh, but uh, thank you very much and uh, see what has been fascinating in chicago is that uh, this is for one of the first times when the hindu community ran a grassroots campaign to defeat what was clearly uh, anti hindu and uh, india anti india resolution based on complete misinformation and of wild untruths and uh, the fact that such a grassroots effort could succeed after almost a year and a half of failed efforts from the hindu community to educate uh, other city councils this thing happened in other parts of america it happened in seattle it happened in san francisco it uh, happened in minneapolis so the fact that this was a 
stark uh, different response from the community and it was able to educate people is something that needs to be looked at. And that is why we are here today and we have the leaders that made it possible. Uh, so Dr. Barai and uh, Amitabh Mittalji uh, did a fantastic, fantastic job. And I, I must commend that there were other members in the community who stood behind them and stood hand in hand with them to make this happen. And not just the Hindu community, there was a coalition of many other communities as well that came in to stand up for truth. So I would start by asking uh, first a question to Dr. Barai. Dr. Barai, when did you first get to know about this resolution and how did you come to know about it? We came to know about it sometimes in late July of 2020. <laughs> you know, we want, depending upon how much time you have for us, we want to share some of the pulse and some of the things that we have learned. Now, clearly, we realize who we are talking to, but we don't want these things to go out too much into the written media because we don't want to share our toolkits with our opponents. Absolutely. It's yes, sir, only for I, our internet. Um, I, I will tell you that this uh, show goes uh, uh, every week uh, on multiple uh, media platforms, including on TAG TV, and it also goes to um, all the platforms like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Our weekly viewership is about uh, 2,500 to uh, about 2,500 uh, per show. And sometimes it goes over 5,000. <laughs> With special guests like you, we expect maybe five to 7,000 people watching this show around the world. <clears throat> First, we, you know, once we knew about it in August, the title of the resolution was Congratulations to India on its Independence Day. But it was full of poison, hatred for India and Hindus against BJP, against Narendra Modi. We started a campaign which was among few friends. And we decided that we need to do something about it. Now, at that time, COVID was going on quite a bit. So normally we would have been able to demonstrate in front of City Hall everywhere, probably 500,000 people, which we had done for CAA, but because of COVID, that was not the appropriate response. Amitabh was able to engage the services of Mr. Joe Moore so he was not a lobbyist for Narendra Modi or Indian government. I just want to tell you, we, the friends, pitched in the money from our pocket. He is a former alderman, but he was alderman for almost 20 plus years. So he knew everybody. And I have to tell you, retrospectively looking now, this was invaluable piece. In order to piece together 26 aldermen who will vote against it was a virtually impossible task two weeks ago. But Joe Moore played a very important role because many aldermen, if they don't know you or if you don't know them, they are not going to give you an appointment. So somebody being able to reach them to convey our message was a very important part of it. Amitabh, what do you think? Yes, sir. That, that is, uh, when, we, when we initially started in the August and it was... Uh, uh, you know, we did engage the help of Joe Moore and rightly said he is not a uh, uh, a lobbyist hired by Indian government or any way, shape or form. This is our effort. We saw what is coming from other cities where smaller city councils who were uh, hoodwinked is the word I use for that into uh, believing that they're congratulating India while the hateful uh, um, comments uh, were made public record in those cities. Uh, they're not part of the resolution. This is how the game is being played to demonize Hindu dharma and uh, Hindus in America, is that they will call in and they will leave messages on record now. They're part of the city record that uh, Hindus are butchers in India. Hindus are committing genocide in India on minorities, while the facts from, uh, you know, facts are far from that. The ground reality is far from that. And that is the reason my personal passion and uh, about defeating this resolution was, and uh, I had, uh, we, we just a group of, uh, you mentioned World Hindu Congress. So you mentioned the uh, 
uh, it is a very small but very tight team of core uh, uh, workers or in, in, in Chicago um, that is very passionate when something like this comes along. And it was, I would say, it was activated and we, we made sure that this resolution is not going to be given any space in Chicago. It doesn't belong in America, but we will not let it happen in our city. Um, it, it, was, it was our reputation online also that if it had passed, this is, this is harmful for us for generations. Because what I'm saying is that these people are not, they're drafting these resolutions so uh, craftily, but when they call in, they leave these messages, we become the public record. Imagine two or three generations down, our grandkids or great grandkids are reading they're becoming lawyers and doctors. That's what our goals are. And they, they go through the city council and they read the message and say, oh, I belong to a religion that is murderers, that is committing gen committed genocide back in 2020 um, or from 2014 while uh, this Narendra Modi was ruling India. Hindus were uh, killing all the minorities. And that's a public record. And that's the fear. I don't, I don't want our history to be maligned like this and made, um, uh, you know, um, uh, part of the narrative. So that, that is the fear. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting emotional in the head. And uh, so that's why maybe my words are not coming out right. Amitabhji, that was so, you know, I, I think the emotions really come through and it's so well put. I, I, want, to, I want to share this with you because really the, uh, the first uh, indication we got as Hindu Pact was this original resolution. And I'm putting, I'm gonna put this up on the screen and we're not gonna obviously read it. But this is voluminous. I mean, this is for people who can, uh, you know, if you can see the screen, this is 10 page resolution. Uh, uh, the preamble of this goes up to three pages and it is atrocious, right? Um, what, what was your first reaction? Uh, and we're gonna systematically cover this, right? So what was your first reaction and Dr. Barai's first reaction when this first hit you? I mean, like when you first saw this, because remember this, at least you had the opportunity to see it in a city like San Francisco, they operated, the Hindu phobic forces operated in stealth mode for seven months. Whereas in your case, you at, at least you guys were vigil, uh, vigilant and uh, you know aware of what is going on, and you found this resolution. What was the first thought that went through your mind when you yeah. saw this resolution? You know, I have I saw on the board of director of Methodist Hospitals, but even more important, medical licensing board of the state of Indiana now for 22 years. <laughs> One thing we need to realize. You need emotions, you, more, you need the drive, but you also need a very intelligent approach. How do we get the job done? So you start from the reverse angle. How do we get job done? I tell some people who come before the licensing board and give long lectures, I say, guys, one thing you need to realize, there are seven members of the board, and if you want license, you need four out of seven votes. Same, we think, same thing we realize here in democracy, whether it is U.S. Congress or U.S. Senate or Chicago City Council, this is not a court of law. Many of the members are politically motivated, donation motivated, whatever you want to call it. So our goal was that they should not get 26 votes out of 50. <laughs> okay, you start out with a little bit of reverse engineering. Now, there was some dirty trick played by the mayor on the last day. <clears throat> so you need, you need to know, and Joe Moore and some others were able to educate us. So the law in the city of Chicago is that for any resolution to pass, it needs 26 affirmative votes. So if some people did not vote, it doesn't matter. Now, mayor changed the rule on the last day that for non-binding resolution, it needs majority vote of those who are present. And that scared us for a few moments because we had talked to many older men and we were going on the preparation that they will not have 26 affirmative votes. That we were very confident. Our mathematics was on the day of morning that they will have about 16 to 18 votes. We'll have probably about 18 to 20 nay votes 
and there will be about 12 to 15 who will abstain. And we said that was okay because they will not get majority. But now when the mayor changed the rule of the game, we said, oh, oh we might end up losing here. But say, it's okay. If that's what happens, that's what happens. Now, let, let me go back to some educational points that we have learned out of this. And I think that is the message. These resolutions are not the spontaneous movement of Muslims or left wings. This is a well-oiled, well-planned machinery of Council for Islamic American Relations. In every city, they are the ones who have started this. They are the ones who drafted it. They are the ones who secretly, by using fancy title and putting poison, did it. <laughs> and of course, they have the paid staff. <clears throat> so the paid staff, what they will do, they will call the offices of the older men. One day they'll call under the name of Muhammad, second day under the name of Ahmad, third day under the name of Shiraz. So it will create an illusion that there are lots and lots of people who are against the, uh, I mean, for this resolution. So like there was a widespread community support. They will include the names of fake organizations which don't even exist on paper. They are not registered. For example, they said there are 26 organizations supporting. Most of them were bogus organizations which did not exist. 120 business, you can go to any Muslim shop and they will say, yes, they, they did not even take consent of it. They simply put the names. So remember, we have to learn how these guys operate because if you are going to be able to oppose it successfully in future in other cities, you need to know how the enemy operates. That's why everybody has the intelligence agencies. <clears throat> so this is how they operate it. So it is the care Council for American Islamic Relations, if you, if they get out of picture, there are no resolutions in the past, none in Chicago, and there will be none in future unless they come up with another outfit. So know who is the prime uh, entity responsible. Now, we also did a research on this organization, <clears throat> and we found out that this was a pre-organization to Hamas. In fact, the person who founded Hamas <clears throat> is the one who founded CARE. Fortunately, with internet, you don't have to go to the libraries and research it. Google will do the job for you. And that's what we did. We searched their background and everything, and we found out that this organization is banned as a terrorist organization in United Arab Emirates. And then we also decided that we want to expose them. So we took out paid advertisement in Chicago Sun Times, you know, in uh, Hindi we say, Unko bhi mirchi lagane ke the. you know, they should have known <clears throat> that they can't call Hindus butchers and all those things. Then we are going to brand them as terrorists also, though using polite language. We exposed their connection to Hamas. And it is, we found out the fact that in 2015, their head of the Dallas, what they had done was they had created a fake organization, 501C, called Holy Land Foundation. They collected the money in name of helping the people and that money was diverted to Hamas and Muslim Brotherhood. <clears throat> now they were convicted, <clears throat> including the head of the Dallas office and sent to jail for 65 years. So we exposed that. <laughs> then their role in trying to go against the Jews. So all those things were exposed that these are not ordinary Muslim organization. This is part of terrorist organization. And now we are going to go a little forward. They were the ones who also endorsed Joe Biden. <clears throat> so saying that we are going to deliver you 3.1 million Muslim votes was too sweet for the Democratic Party. And that's how they got away with the Muslim plank and the Council for Religious Freedom. So now we'll have to take them up and I'm thinking about strategy, how we are going to do it. <clears throat> I have some ideas and we are going to implement them, hopefully to try to put them on the defensive. So we knew who our enemy was, who was the one who was instigating. So 
first time with services of Joe Moore, we were able to put a hold on this resolution. We had a Zoom meeting with Mr. Sawyer, who was the chair of the Health and Human Services Committee. Now he betrayed us also. He said, okay, we'll put this on hold. And if it becomes active again, we'll let you know to so you can represent your side of the story. But I have to tell you, don't ever think, whether it is in Congress or anywhere, it's your merit that gets you the day. It's not an impartial judge who is voting, how much money who has contributed, what kind of words are used. <clears throat> so many of these soft-hearted or left-wing aldermen, when they hear, oh, there is oppression, there is a racial discrimination, there is sexual discrimination, they jump on it. And these things are greased by money and it by phone calls. And that's what happened here. Maria Hayden, <clears throat> the Congre uh, older woman who was the prime mover for this, she herself is a lesbian. In fact, in my tweets to her, I wrote that if you went to Afghanistan, you will not get any freedom. You'll be put under burqa. And once they know your sexual orientation, you'll be stoned to death by under Sharia law. <laughs> but the get them. Now, after we were able to postpone it, suddenly we found out in February that 48 hours before the meeting of the Health and Human Services Committee, it was put on the agenda. And by the time we knew it, the meeting was over and it passed. And now these are Zoom meetings, not personal meetings. That gave us about two and a half weeks because it has to be found uh, approved by the full city council. So we also studied the rules of city council and found that if at least two aldermen requested, then it can be moved further for a month. So clearly we needed some more time to think over and counter. So we met a couple of aldermen and requested them to put a hold on it for at least one month more. <clears throat> and that was successful. Alderman Brookings uh, suggested it, and you know that is part of the rule. Nobody can oppose it, so it was put. That gave us about four weeks of time to try to fight out what was happening. <laughs> now, how do we get 26 votes, or how do we not allow them to get 26 votes? So that was a combination. You know, there is not one single thing that got us to the number of 26. Joe Moore, because of his association with the aldermen, he was able to talk to majority of the aldermen, convey our meeting. And what are the points, key points that we made to all the aldermen? Yes, we put them in our emails, but I don't know that who was going to read all those emails. Number one, that this was a very divisive resolution. People of city of Chicago with different ethnic backgrounds we're living peacefully, and this is going to create a rift between the Hindu communities and the Muslims. So why do we need this divisive resolution? Second point, city, city of Chicago aldermen are elected to take care of the local problems of city of Chicago. They do not know much about India, and right now there is COVID, people don't have jobs, people don't have housing, people have need for food. So there are people who need roads. So at this time, why does city of Chicago have to worry about something happening 8,000 miles away? Now that, that was quite a bit acceptable to many aldermen. And during their speech on the floor, they pointed that out that we should worry about problems of Chicago than about that. The third point that we made was respect the democracies of other countries. India is a democratic country. Their representatives are elected. They make their laws and please let them make their own laws just as you would not appreciate other people commenting about what happens in Chicago and making laws and making resolutions. Please respect other democracy. <laughs> and we said there are 206 countries in the world as per latest United Nations count. Every time there is an issue everywhere, are you going to jump in? You know, it may be okay when there is no democracy like China or Myanmar and you do something, 
But when there is another sovereign democratic country, it is totally inappropriate. And some of the aldermen did buy that argument. Then we had to talk with Jewish organizations and others. They also joined in with us to try to denounce it. Uh, we also, the other point was that this was all outright lie. No such things has happened in India. And this is all done by care. And this is a terrorist organization. How many bought our argument? We don't know. But I know that uh, Alderman uh, Irwin, with whom we sat down for lunch, I did give him all those papers. He carefully read them. <laughs> so whether... You know, many times they may not want to use those words on the city council, but we did request him to talk to some of his aldermen friend and see what he has seen himself and share with them. We don't know what exactly he shared with other aldermen, but he did speak on the floor of the city council. I also have to give credit here to the consul general. We initially, he was very inactive, but then he became active. And he did make personal phone calls to practically almost all the aldermen. And his position does carry some weight. And I'm sure all the other efforts added to it. <laughs> then we have a friend, Amrish Majan. Amrish was very active in City Hall. He's kind of retired, but he is a very good friend. And he helped out personally speaking to many aldermen. In fact, he arranged lunch meeting with at least four aldermen that I attended and tried to persuade them. Then we had some members of the community who had relationship with individual aldermen. For example, <clears throat> we have Harendra Mangrola. He's a business contractor. He knew at least three aldermen. He contributed to them, had business. So he personally lobbied with those three aldermen and all those three aldermen voted for us. Same way we had another person, Ram Chakrabarti, he had a factory in 22nd Ward, and he talked to two aldermen whom I knew, and those two aldermen voted with us. So you can see here that this um, majority was staged piece by piece by different efforts, and ultimately it became successful. Now, <laughs> yes, our volunteers met quite a bit, and we also sought help from other people in the Hindu community who are good writers, like Satya Dasapati, Arvind Kumar, Suhag Shukla, <clears throat> then uh, uh, Sunanda Vashist, they wrote some blogs. Then we said, look, we, want to, uh, we, we wanted to use uh, WhatsApp. Now in Kashmir, the terrorists were using WhatsApp to make the groups to throw the stones and attack the security. But we said that Fortunately, what happened, I, a lot of people put my name under different groups. And we have several other friends who are in similar situation. Amitabh is on many, many groups. Nirav is on many, many groups. Then Bailal is on many groups. Uh, Jagdish Suthar. So what we said was, <clears throat> let us carefully draft. It took us eight, nine hours to draft it. And I have to salute our young generation who are very internet and social media savvy. And I want to highlight their roles in detail. So I drafted a letter, one page, you know, uh, introducing what is the topic. Then we attached the second resolution, which was somewhat milder than, it was less poisonous, but it was still poison. Then we attached Satya's blog, where he had replied to every point that was raised. Then we uh, attached the blog, which highlighted the terrorist role of care. So, so can, I, can, I, can I interrupt to ask you, what was the, because many people who are outside Chicago uh, may want the context. So the question they will come up with, you Amitabh Ji can answer is, why did they come up with the second resolution? I mean, they had the first resolution. Uh, what was the difference uh, for people who don't know? What is the difference? And did you have uh, did you have to work? To, I mean, how who engineered the second resolution, uh, which was okay. very uh, uh, different from the first one, right? So there's a quick answer okay. on that. Is Bharaji yeah. can give a detail on it, but the quick answer to that is the the government in the United States changed. So the Trump administration was out. There were mentions of Trump administration. They could not use that anymore. So they took that out, and they they compressed 
they're in eight or nine points into one paragraph. If you read the point eight of the new resolution, it's a very, again, there's a term that Bharatji used, uh, sugar-coated cyanide pill. So that's what they did. They compressed it and made it a very tight capsule out of a, you know, many different tablets. They crushed them, put them in a cyanide pill. Uh, it, it's a, a very craftily made resolution. So they're taking eight or nine points, putting them into just one number eight point of the new resolution. Plus the Trump administration is no longer there, so they cannot, you know, attack the U.S. government and the current U.S. regime. That's what they call it. Uh, so since now their guy is in the house, so they have to take that uh, wording out. That, that itself kind of strange because uh, didn't Prime Minister Modi meet uh, President Obama and Pre uh, President Trump both? That, that's that's what the city council fails to see, the, that we are for friendship and love and we're sharing. That Ajay, bhai. Obama received the same courtesy, same hug right at the Indian Delhi airport uh, that Trump had to wait for that hug into Houston. Baba <laughs> received that hug on the Delhi airport upon landing from Modi ji. That, that's mm -hmm. the kind of love and, uh, you know, and Modi ji was a new prime minister then. He was just right. a new prime minister six months in and he invited Obama to be chief guest of the India Republic Day celebration. Sure. Now, this is important for our viewers who are outside of Chicago to know these details because they, they, uh, they know the outcome, but they don't know all the hard work and all the nuances, the political nuances that went into it. Uh, sorry, Dr. Yeah. Roy, uh, uh, Bharat, please go ahead. Okay. The reason was that resolution was so aberrant that many city council men, if they read it, they would have a hard time passing it because it was very dirty. I think some of the people inside realized that this resolution was very dirty. And I think some people in mayor's office were supportive of the resolution, but they thought that this was too caustic and it will not pass. So they said, they agreed in principle to hate India and hate Hindus, but do it rather than, you know, using the same, that, that's my supposition. So they sort of made it from minus 10 to minus five. Let's put it this way. Yeah. I, I, to, I wanted to ask a question, Ajay Bhai. To see it. But go ahead, please, Bhai Bhai, please continue. So, but as I told you, don't be under ever illusion that these things are done based on the justice and truth. Unfortunately not. <clears throat> it is based on who you know. Like Jason and some of the older men, when we met, I said, look, right now I'm doing a COVID vaccine camp here at Manasya Mandir. We have done six such camps. We said, older men, if you want to do COVID camp in your constituency, let me know. We'll come there. We'll bring the volunteers. You know, we have to grease this kind of things. Let's face it. The other thing that played part was, uh, I mentioned about the friends. Some of the our Christian friends, they also joined. And our Jewish friends, they also joined. The, there was one older woman, Silverstein. She has a, about 33% Jewish population, but she also has a high Muslim population. So she was going to vote for it. Uh, we tried to talk to her and she said, oh, we are under a lot of pressure. So finally, we joined our Jewish friends. They called the rabbi in, their, in her own district, her own rabbi of the synagogue. And the rabbi personally talked to her. The mayor of Lincolnwood, who is an Orthodox Jew, he personally talked to her. And they made several Jews from her own constituency make calls to her. Our Jewish friend mounted a campaign on Facebook openly in our support, and they made some of the Jewish friends call. Now, ultimately, what we were able to get from her is that she was absent. But at least we took out one pos potential positive vote. So I had a question uh, in continuation of this, uh, Bharat, Bharat Bhai. Uh, yeah. You mentioned that there was this in intersectional effort with the Jewish community and the uh, Christian community as well in Chicago. So tell us more about uh, what role they played and how many uh, aldermen were not just influenced by them, but what was the interaction that happened? You mentioned about the synagogue case. So what were the, some other examples of such interactions where other non-Hindu communities, non-Indian communities actually stood up for the truth? And, and okay. stood, stood by us. 
Okay, six did not have any role. <laughs> Their name was used, six Sevadal, but there is no six Sevadal. It never existed. It doesn't exist. But these guys used it. So Khalistani Sikhs, unfortunately, have been anything that is anti-India. That's what Khalistani Sikhs are doing. But Sikhs really did not play any active role one way or the other. Vijay Prabhakar and some of his Christian followers, when Amitabh and friends demonstrated in front of Maria Hayden's office, they brought some of the Christian volunteers. Amitabh, you can talk more about it since yeah. I was not there, but yeah. you were there. The role of Vijay Prabhakar and Christian community in the demonstration in front of Maria Hayden's office. Yeah. So that, that was a, 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 you know, just a pl quick plan. Within 24 hours, we decided we want to go and demonstrate outside her office, even though she doesn't come there on Monday. Uh, we kept our group to the requ uh, required minimum uh, under the COVID restrictions uh, to make sure that uh, if we exceed that number, we'll go across the street. But um, we had a trolley uh, with the banners on it running in circles around her office with the, uh, uh, and, you know, it, it was, it was a, uh, it would have been a better demonstration, but uh, Vijay Prabhakar orchestrated that really, really good. And we had support from, um, Another group, a Christian group, I'm not at the liberty of taking their name yet, but they sent out over um, 13,000 um, uh, letters to their members, and many of their members also called in. So the tide exactly turned two days before the vote, um, where uh, final numbers we are hearing is somewhere between, um, you know, uh, four to one ratio of our people calling in saying don't vote on it versus one person from the other side calling in. So... But it's been since <clears throat> July, it's been that they have more people calling and we have very few people because we were a small group of volunteers. Uh, but once we received the support from the largest Jewish group in Chicago area, uh, stand with us. I can take their name because they authorized me. But uh, uh, with 60,000 plus membership, and then we have the support of this other Christian group with 13,000 members. Uh, these two groups uh, turned the tide completely. They made so many calls. Um, and pointed calls to the aldermen, um, that, was, that was really helpful. So to message to the other cities is reach out to um, these organizations in your area before anything like this happens, because <clears throat> they will be really helpful. We are completely aligned with what is happening to the Jewish community in uh, U.S. Uh, being vilified. Um, it's happening to the Hindu community in U.S. being vilified. So we need to come together with these groups. So, that's very so really fascinating. I want to share with you another important component of the success. <laughs> and that is our young generation who are very computer and social media savvy. I'm not one of those. I can use internet for medical purpose and news and other email. <clears throat> but these people, our young volunteers, they were fantastic. So, Varadji, can I quickly say something? Sure. Yeah. yeah. We cannot take their names for certain reasons, yeah. um, but um, I just wanted to shout out from here, if they're watching, uh, Koti Koti Naman to you, because that, that was one of the fears I had growing up here, that what about after me, where's the next generation? And I was blessed to have these seven warriors with us in Chicago who showed up and uh, they're doing tremendous work. They, they, they worked, uh, eight, nine hours uh, in, in, in sitting with Bharatji, drafting, redrafting, and then going home and then staying up all night on Twitter and Facebook and uh, Instagram, you name it. They sent out these messages like uh, it's unbelievable that, that these seven people did. And I, they know who they are. I can't take their names, but, uh, you know, my naman to them. That's it. Thank you. And, and it's uh, you, them. <laughs> I, I absolutely echo what Amitabh said, <clears throat> but let me share with you now the modus operandi without taking their name. So it took us eight to nine hours to very carefully craft the message. Some of you got it on WhatsApp. But once it was done, at the bottom was one click. So with one click, message went out to five individuals or five groups. But many of them were groups. So it went to maybe 10 people, 20 people, 30 people. So in last four days, we were able to send out message to hundreds of people 
with a request <clears throat> that you share it with other people. And with that one click, all 50 aldermen will receive the email under their name. That was So believe it or not, each alderman received between five to 7,000 emails, each alderman. And that was because of this automation process that we were able to automate our letter writing. One individual take 50 aldermen, get the letter. And below me, it was very easy for people to do. They read, oh, Bri has said this, read, doom, tick, and 50 aldermen get the email. So that's how we were able to get between five to 7,000. And on the floor of city council, they did acknowledge that they read thousands of emails, most of them against it. So this is where we swamped them, <clears throat> the care. The other so, message, and these people say, posted it on the social media you know, Twitter storm and putting it on the Facebook. So th these guys are savvy, I'm not. That's why we have to credit and we have to get our younger generation that is computer savvy, social media savvy to rein in. We design for them, we give them, you know, like idea and then let it be implemented. So quickly, one more note. This is not a one letter to get 4,000 copies of. We had 17 different versions of these. So you're, you're, not, you're not feeling like that, oh, this is just a copy and paste job. So it will randomize every time you one click. It will send a different letter with your name, with your address, and it will change the paragraphs around. Uh, so there were 17 different versions of these uh, letters that went out. So that's, that's really fascinating. I just wanted to ask uh, one more point on this topic. You know, in other cities, what had happened was that CARE and their Islamist allies waited until the last moment to do their resolution. So what happened in Chicago that they went ahead so early? Is it that you, uh, the Hindu community is more connected, therefore they had uh, prior information? Because in San Francisco, the Hindu community came to know literally on the day it was being passed. Well, they, they tried that here too. Uh, if, you, if you remember what Bharatji said, the health and human services vote uh, just was a surprise for us because we had a personal assurances that uh, the, from the chairman of the committee that, oh, if it comes up, I'll give you a, enough time to bring it up, but I will make sure it never comes up. That was that was an internal promise, and he did not keep his promise. So that's what Mark. Uh, in, in, uh, in San Francisco, actually, it, it, I'm, uh, I'm going to sign off and join again. Committee. I have a little problem with connection. Okay. Uh, no problem. I'm uh, joining uh, again. Uh, you're, you're all good. We can see you. Yeah, we can see you. So in, in San Francisco, actually, till the last day, nobody even, even knew about it. And that was, uh, you know, because they, they were able to work in the stealth mode for seven months. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, so did you have, uh, how did you get the early information that this is even coming up in Health and Human Services Committee? So I'm not at liberty to share that and uh, on open media, just to let okay. you know. And that's the answer. Okay, uh, so that is that is that shows that the see this is a lesson for every city, uh, the Hindu American community in every city that the fact that this information was shared, even though it was attempted in a stealth mode, shows that having good relations and good connections and good outreach, uh, in general, with the leadership, political leadership of every city is so critical, because I think the failure in Seattle and 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 San Francisco was that. The Hindu American community obviously was not that connected to the decision making process because of which they fell behind in terms of responding. So the you know a hundred hundred congratulations, a thousand congratulations yeah. for, to everybody in Chicago for being having the ability to do that connection. And actually, let oh. me let me just point one thing out that we, as you guys know, this is a dial in a uh, you know uh, show and people participated actively in the chat. So Arti Kaushal uh, Chopra ji who is interacting with us on the chat from YouTube is, uh, is, has commented saying that, a lot of people have commented, but RTG has said that great chat and dialogue, very informative. We need to know how to prevent this in other cities in California. So uh, she's uh, obviously she's writing from California and she's looking for uh, some guidance where people, the Hindu community may not have the same kind of reach <coughs> and. Um, you know, uh, reach as they do in Chicago. So, what what guidance do you have for Hindu community in uh, in uh, California and smaller cities in California, for example? 
And okay. you know, California has an even more substantial Hindu pop, uh, population. And RTG is saying, especially in Orange County. Uh, and Orange County, I mean, there's uh, you know, a lot of Indians in Orange County, a lot of Hindus in Orange County. So what guidance do you have uh, for people in Orange County, let's say the Irvine area of Southern California? So Bharat Bhai or uh, Amitabh Ji, one of you may want to answer that. Um, okay, there was, <clears throat> there was one other point I wanted to cover. <clears throat> we will have to rise up and just these guys are using fancy names to get things passed, like Council for American Islamic Relationship, congratulations, we will have to be smart. So what we did in Chicago, we have started a 501C called US-India Friendship Council. <coughs> Remember, if we want to approach the older men and other people, or even congressmen or senators, if you you can go as Hindus, it will have one type of impact. But if you want to go as if, look, your goal is same, okay? Goal is no different. You are just using a different vehicle to try to achieve it because religious organizations many times don't get as much of attention as neutral sounding or US India Friendship League. Because whatever you want to oppose, you can do it in name of, oh, this will affect the friendship between the two countries. You realize how we can use it. So we thought that that will be a smart way. You want to contact the congressman. Nobody is going to oppose and say that, oh, you are trying to promote friendship between the two countries. Hindus, they might say you are butchers. This you might say do this but they are not good. So we, all the entire campaign in newspapers and everything was under the banner of US-India Friendship League. Now, we are the guys who control it, okay? But we don't put the Hindu name there. We want to do it as Hindu, then we do it with another organization. So you can have multiple organizations <clears throat> doing the same thing, but from, emphasizing from different angles. Now about the Orange County you are going to need dedicated people. It's going to cost some money. As compared to them, we did not even spend 10% of the money. But we did contribute because taking the advertisement in the newspaper and hiring Joe Moore, uh, total, Amitabh, it cost us about 15000 or $20,000. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we, we had to come up money and our members contributed towards it. And then you will have to get and plan it. And of course, be alert. If this kind of resolution appears, talk to me or Amitabh. We will guide you exactly where it is, what the city laws there are, and then try it. It's like, you know, you'll have to custom craft it. We gave you the idea how we did it in Chicago and pick up points. Many of them will be useful, but you will have to customize the response based on the population there how much you are able to get support. I'm sure there are Hindus who have the money who will be willing to contribute and have some organization on paper on standby basis that you can use. You know, if you started, if you have, I would have done it as Bharat Barai or Amrit Mittal or so, it would not have worked. You had to have some sort of organization name. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bharat Bhai. Uh, but, you know, one thing that the that needs to be underlined in this in this conversation <clears throat> is that everything that Dr. Barai suggested is actually also the truth. The resolution is not just anti-Hindu, it is anti-India. Therefore, the response has to address <clears throat> both the topics because it not only targets American Hindus, which is how American Hindus would respond to counter it, but it also genuinely targets relationship between two of the biggest democracies in the world, which is America and India. So what Dr. Barai just mentioned is actually a very truthful uh, representation. And that is why it was so successful because it was being carried forward by truth. So I think that is why it is important for us to understand that you know these tactics that Dr. Barai just mentioned, these are not tactics that are just coming out of thin air. These are tactics that are based on reality and the truth. And therefore that is why the success was so easily achieved. And that is why also it was easier for other communities both Jewish and Christian and, and, and other non-denominational communities to stand behind us because truth was on our side. But 
What needs to be underlined further is that truth is not the only thing, as Dr. Barai so aptly pointed out before, that will carry us forward. It has to be astute political awareness, a strong sense of identity, and a strong response in terms of commitment, money, and the amount of effort put in to counter this resolution. These are very important factors that will make this happen. So, knowing so knowing the working, I, uh, 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 I will add to that. Just one second. Let me add one thing before you answer that, and uh, maybe you can answer both of these together. Um, I, I also wanted to uh, ask you a question about what uh, comment on what Ritsada said, but also I wanted to bring in one more thing, and maybe you can answer both of it comprehensively. And that is, uh, care is working under Islamic name. Um, why? What is a compelling reason for us to not use Hindu name but use uh, in the U.S. Friendship Council? Because CARE is openly saying that they are Council of American Islamic Relations. IMAC is openly saying that it's Indo-American Muslim uh, Coalition. So they're using Islam openly. Why are we using India? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'm not saying that that is wrong. You know, it can also be done under the Hindu name, but you also need a non-denominational name. I can tell you one thing, it is a disadvantage also doing it under the name of Islamic name. Immediately the Jews went against it. Okay? The Christians immediately went against it. So, yes, they are doing it. I don't think that is very smart on their part, but that is how they are able to rally the funds from Middle Eastern countries. May, may I interject, I, I, Baraji? I, I, Baraji, let me, let me, let me just finish the thought here. So, for the initial eight months, care was never mentioned. So initially, it was Hindus for human rights and Chicago Hindu, uh, Chicago uh, secular community or some other title. So, they had these 26 names. Care was not one of them. Care was never one of them. Care came out just the week before this uh, vote was to come out with their own message going out to their congregations in all the mosques area. So I will just don't call them a separate organization. They are closely associated with all their mosques because they sent out a communication to all their mosques, which we received a copy of. That's how we, CARE came out in open. CARE is behind this. If you hear in Seattle, you don't hear the name of CARE. If you're in um, uh, Alameda County, you don't hear the name of CARE. In, in Cambridge, you don't hear the name of CARE. In Albany, you don't hear the name of care. In Chicago, they were pushed by us six back, six times you pushed them back. So care had no choice but to come out in open. So the care. Yeah. I didn't hear the name care in uh, Seattle. I did hear the name of care in no, no, San Francisco. The people our side mentioned, but on the resolution side, they were not mentioned. I am also was very actively yeah. openly involved in care was yeah. openly involved in both those cities actually. So uh, in at least some cities, care was very openly involved. IAMC was openly involved, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ajay Bhai, I, I, I have to partly agree with what Amitabh is saying. <clears throat> in Chicago, care was not openly, I mean, we suspected, okay, that they were the culprit. Mm -hmm. But we did not have a proof. But when they sent out, actually, they have formed a group called train for india at gmail.com. So that was the smoking gun we got in our hand. They sent this email. So they have even a hit squad against India. And so they were the ones who were doing it. And when we got the smoking gun in our hand, we also gave it to some of the uh, aldermen. So if you ask me, really, it, it's plus and minus both. It, it's not always plus. Because there are people who may not say outside not to look like bigot, but they hate Muslims too, among the Christians. That, oh, this is all by the Muslim groups. They are always troublemakers. They are always complainers. So... I would say if you do a multi-pronged attack, just don't do it under the Hindu names. Look, you can control the same organization. Me and Amitabh are with the US-India Friendship Council too. So you can be a member of VHPA and you can be a member of US-India Friendship Council. You control both organizations. So you can send one letter in their Hindu name and send one letter in name of Friendship League. Of course, with a different rationale that, okay, you are defaming uh, in Hindus, another side, you are causing the bad relationship between the two countries. Some people will buy. It's like, you know, GM has Chevrolet and it has a Buick and it has Cadillac. So <clears throat> you can do the things under more than one name with the same purpose. 
Mm-hmm. And, and it, that would not be untruth either, because that is what uh, often uh, Indian American and Hindu American identities overlap. So that would that would be also a very that honest way to do it. That's why, see, that's why it is very important to understand that everything that was done by the our side was based on factual, honest effort. Whereas the other side did use deceit, did use misinformation, did use untruth. And that's why eventually it started falling apart. The only goal here for our community is to continuously and very tactically, as Dr. Bharat Bharat Barai mentioned, very tactically understand and understand the problem and then go about stepwise dealing with it. Uh, Amitabhji, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I wanted to urge people to go and listen to the seven different city council meetings uh, where this resolution was brought in or they were going to talk about bringing it up. You would hear whenever... We called in, we were talking on facts. We never named any caste, creed, religion as a uh, uh, person uh, who was causing oppression or anything other than care. I, I would give you that. We, we did point it out care, but we did not blame any religion, caste, creed in our statements because we were talking about, hey, this, this resolution part, this is false based on this fact. This part is false based on this fact. So this is away from fact. That's what we talked about. We never demeaned or uh, chastised anybody in our responses. You can hear all of them versus you hear the callers from the other side and they're openly uh, calling Hindus bigoted. They're openly calling Hindus racist. They're openly calling Modi a, a bastard that, uh, in one of the meetings and calling him butcher. Uh, and it is surprising that how a, a council person in the city of Chicago, two time, three time council person, can say that their reason for voting is just because Modi met Trump in Houston. That it is just confusing for anybody. Like, you're not going by the facts in, presented in front of you, you're going by um, some uh, uh, Im- imaginary hate towards some person. And you're, you're blaming an entire country, an entire religion. Well, I wanted to ask one thing that uh, that probably uh, comes out as a corollary question uh, to to this conversation uh, that we are having here. Uh, you know, Council for American in- in Islamic Relations, C- CARE, which is a pan-Islamist organization, which is uh, closely connected to terrorist group, including Muslim Brotherhood. Then you have Indian American Muslim Council, which is a front of the Council for American Islamic Relationships. All those names we know are now out in the open. My question to both of you is, what is the role of you think Pakistani American community or Pakistani organizations as representing the nation state of Islamic Republic of Pakistan or similar such nation state Islamic organization uh, play in this? Did you see any, any initiative, no. any effort, any representation from their side in pushing the care and narrative? No, they, they don't do it openly. They, they, would, they would send their representatives. We know, uh, and again, they should remain nameless because uh, that will be a, a, a legal issue to define. But we do know that somebody who's uh, of uh, um, 50-50 Pakistani parent, like you know, most of the cases in India are, there are uh, one parent is from Pakistan, another from India, uh, and they stay Pakistan-leaning. They, they would still, when they're calling in or they're writing something, they will become Indian. And then uh, uh, in the normal day-to-day life, they're Pakistani. So that, that's, that's what happens there. Uh, you know, I have a, I'm going to share a, my screen and I'm going to ask you. I, I think we lost Dr. Barai for some Sorry. reason, uh, but uh, I'm glad you're still here. So let me ask you this uh, How did you deal with this? Because I, I looked at these two articles that came in Chicago Sun Times, and I think these are, uh, these are pretty much a hit job. On uh, and we got Dr. Barai back. So, uh, can you see my uh, PowerPoint presentation? Uh, yes. Okay, so this is the first article that came. It is from an Indian uh, uh, American uh, Muslim. Uh, Again, Hussain, uh, 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 this, without naming her, she uh, is no, 50, just 50. One second. One second. Uh, yeah, yeah. You saw this article uh, from uh, Chicago Sun Times from Rumana Hussein, and then uh, this was before the council resolution was brought in. And uh, uh, on, uh, the, before it was voted on, rather, and then after it was de- uh, defeated, this other article came out, and from Neil Steinberg in the same paper, Chicago Sun, uh, Chicago Sun Times, 
and it about it, it says that oh it failed and that is a moral failure to go uh, failure to go to move for Chicago City Council. So I think uh, you know what is the uh, what is what is your comment on the role that the Chicago local Chicago mainstream media uh, played on uh, on this issue and what was your uh, uh, way of or uh, strategy for countering that or did you counter it at all? In the mainstream media, I'm not talking about the you know, ethnic Indian press or any of that, but in mainstream media, when you see this kind of a complete hit job on Hindus, on Indians, what was your reaction and how did you counter it? Okay, let me answer and then I'll sign off because I have to attend another meeting, again, part of this strategy. <clears throat> it is for Hindu councilmen, but supported by the Christians, so I have to go to Nepperville. So I will answer this. This lady... <clears throat> Ruana Hussain, she is the daughter of a Hyderabadi Muslim family. She had talked to me and I was very suspicious, but I don't mind talking because what I talk is straight facts and nothing to hide. <clears throat> but I was very well aware that she is going to print what she is going to print. And at the end of interview, I said, are you going to be truthful and print or you are simply going to write what you want to write? And she said, oh, this is an opinion I'm writing, so I can write what I want to write. I don't have to write what you say. Now, <clears throat> New York Times, Washington Post, some of this media, whether they get money from Muslim organizations or they pamper them, whatever they do, they are not for Hindus or for Jews. Okay. Oh, uh, we, uh, Dr. Bharai got disconnected. Do you want to continue? Well, on, uh... Uh, we did respond to it. There, there were several write-ups and letters to the editors of Sun-Times that were sent out. Um, I personally sent out one my rebuttal to this. Um, and we have uh, Richa Gautamji from Denver. She sent a letter to Satyaji from New York, sent a letter. So we had uh, 11 rebuttals that we sent out. And... Um, we had several people also call uh, Sometimes editor and leave messages with the Sometimes editor Steve War um, Warmbier. Uh, that this is, uh, uh, of course, her article is uh, says it's a no-brainer because it was written without using any brains. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hello, uh, so, no, sorry, I, you know I'm. Dr. Murray is back. Um, Dr. Murray, I know you have to go. So, any final comments from you? We'll continue with yeah. Amita. Uh, but uh, final comments from you. I want to finish up the comment about this. So we knew that this is not going to be printed. <laughs> Even Arvind Kumar and Satya, we sent their blog as a reply to Sun-Times. They would not print it. We knew that. So we took paid advertisement. Now, reality is nowadays, very few people read these newspapers. Like Sun-Times has a print circulation of 98,000. So we did counteract their point, but we had to spend money to try to get our point across. But again, you realize those 26 votes did not get swayed either by her article or by our advertisement. I, I enumerated to you how piece by piece we collected those votes. So all these things are many times we call it, it is like treating the doctor rather than patient. We feel good that we wrote this blog, you know, counteracted it. We took advertisement, counteracted it. But did that bring us any votes? I doubt it. That's an excellent so just point. be realistic how we win the battles. <clears throat> I went through this at time of U.S.-India nuclear treaty. So I have quite a bit of experience how to count votes. And that's what ultimately... So remember, our people in Orange County and everywhere should know that plan in a tactical manner how to get the majority votes and... You, you can be Shivaji and Rana Pratap, but you have to win the battle. Exactly. Well, I, I just wanted to add that. Well put, uh, uh, that is very, very well put, very aptly put. Yeah. Ajay Bhai, Hello. I just wanted to add that we have Maya Durga here, my daughter. We Everything that uh, Dr. Barai, uh, Amitabh Ji, and everybody who is working so hard to do everything, it's for people like her, so that in future, they okay. don't face discrimination. Rani Lakshmi Bhai. <laughs> and, 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 and we are trying to secure and, and give a good equal right to their future so that they don't feel discriminated. They don't get attacked for who they are. 
Utsav, you know, anytime our help is needed by any other community, myself, Amitabh, and a lot of our friends will be happy to share our toolkit with them. Okay, I'll sign off. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amitabh Ji, we'll continue with you for a few minutes. Quick, quick note here. Amitabh Ji, go ahead, please. One, one quick note here. The, what Bharat Ji says is important is uh, uh, we are getting surprised while the other side is not getting surprised uh, or, or bringing the surprise on us. Why? Because the other side or the people who are behind it, we know they care. They have their uh, lack of better words or that is the word operatives in every small, big city council. Every small, big city council. Uh, and they are not hiding their intentions of uh, belittling us, pushing us aside, or um, uh, hitting our self-esteem any point they get. They have done recently in Maryland. They've done to us in Chicago also. Uh, you know, so there, uh, give you a simple example. If I want to celebrate the 26th January uh, uh, in Chicago, I apply two weeks in advance, and it takes us at least uh, three days to get a permit for March, peaceful March celebrating India. And the other side will get a, a opposing rally, hours uh, permit just an hour before our rally is supposed to start. Yep. That tells you we need to have our people in the city councils. We need to have our approach in the, not the US Senate and Congress. The city councils are very important moving forward for all Hindus in America. Sanji, I want to, uh, that's a point very well made. I, I you know, I want to uh, kind of a little bit surprise you, but uh, not as much. I think that the speech that you made uh, as a testimony in front of the city council was exceptionally well made. And for many people who, made, uh, who are our viewers, as I said, this will go to at least 5,000 people. I want to play this uh, for them because I think everyone should kind of, you know, hear what you said at the city, uh, Chicago City Council. It came from the bottom of your heart. And I think, uh, you know, the points you made were really well made. So I'm, I'm going to play that. Uh, I'm going to play that speech, uh, if you don't mind, no uh, because it is, it is uh, something that everyone in the community should hear. So please uh, listen to this Amitabhji talking at the City Council uh, meeting uh, and doing the resolution is Amitabh Mittal. Good morning, Council. Good morning, Mayor. Uh, my name is Amitabh Mittal. I'm a resident of city uh, area Chicago for the past 36 years. I am calling and requesting all to vote no on resolution R-2020-583. You will hear there are words like fascism, Nazism, and nationalists which will be loosely thrown around against the world's largest working secular democracy and world's third largest religion. Let's ignore such hurtful words and focus on positive. R-2020-583 was first proposed in August 2020 with condemning Citizenship Amendment Act of 2019. And since then, it has evolved and is adding various laws that have been passed and vetted by the duly elected Constitution Assembly of India, Parliament of India, vetted by the Supreme Court of India. First, is the city of Chicago going to debate laws of a sovereign democratic secular nation, which is 8,000 miles away, or concentrate on issues of managing city of Chicago during these pandemic times? Valuable time of this council has been consumed by discussion on this topic since August 2020. This resolution has created a divide amongst the people of Indian origin who reside here peacefully for the past five decades while the leadership which is supposed to bring the peace and harmony is discussing this hateful resolution. Citizenship Act of 1955, which was drafted by stalwarts like the India's first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, the writer of the Constitution of India, and the first Viceroy Lord Mountbatten, with approval of the first Premier of Pakistan, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, and Assembly of Pakistan and United Nations. Provision of this law expired in 1955, leaving over two million people stateless. All that Citizenship Amendment Act, which has amended the law, is to allow dignity to 2.5 million people to apply and get citizenship while they were living in India for 70 years, stateless. This sugar-coated cyanide resolution, R2020, has been sponsored by religious extremist groups. It is highly deceptive title, 
honoring India while it is full of hate and false allegations against secular democratic India, its institution and mandate of 1.35 billion citizens. In words of Paul Harris, the founder of one of the world's largest service organizations and a native of Chicago, let's take the test. Is it based on truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build, bring goodwill and better friendship? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? In my opinion, this resolution fails on all four accounts. I humbly urge you, request you, and appeal to your inner conscience to do away with this hate and lie and vote no on resolution R-2020-583. Thank you so much. God bless America. Amitabh ji, uh, very, very, very well put, very well articulated, uh, very emotional. Uh, any comments? I, you, you know me, Ajay ji, for a very long time. And uh, I don't write things. I, I just uh, say what I want to say and it comes out. And it was a good thing that I wrote this down. Uh, I was, you can tell because I was reading it and I was, uh, you know, um, lost in some some points uh but it was a good thing that the the next generation uh said no 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 uh, uh, okay, uh, okay if once you start talking you cannot stop me on this topic so it's a good thing i wrote it down um like you said it came from my heart and i literally typed it in less than five minutes i typed all that up to send it to the next generation to approve my script. <laughs> and I was so happy that they approved what I wrote. Um, and uh, this is my point. The people are, uh, one of the articles that came out yesterday or day before also mentions uh, this uh, CAA as a, uh, you know, uh, the people don't even want to go in the full form of what CAA is. And it has a very important word built into it. It's a citizenship amendment act it amended something that was already there it was not something new that was created it amended what did it amend it gave a provision back on that form of citizenship application to india that was removed on january 1st 1956 so uh, uh, in a, 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 a some in gross justice injustice that was done on people who arrived uh, in India after uh, December 31st of 55 was was actually solved by this resolution. It's not a moving forward resolution or uh, uh, amendment act. Uh, it, 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 the provision of this ended in January 31st of 2014. So this is not something, a, a new law that will continue to be applicable in India. Uh, there are new refugee uh, status, uh, uh, citizenship asylum requirements that are already there. So all it did was the people who are living, uh, who were living in near Delhi, uh, a place called Majnu Katila, some people living near Jaipur and some people living in Gujarat uh, for like uh, I said in my speech, 70 years, stateless, uh, you know, uh, fourth generation. They, 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 they're born in India, they married in India, they've gone through the whole process. They still can call themselves uh, citizens of India because uh, as the constitution of India was drafted, they said, uh, uh, even if you apply for OCI, if your parents are from uh, these three countries, Pakistan, Afghanistan, or Bangladesh today, uh, you cannot get OCI. That's, that's because of the Indian constitution. Uh, so these people who are living in India, grown up in India, the, uh, all their life is in India. They were living in India stateless. All the CAA did was giving them dignity. And and I don't know why, why people don't understand that point. And also, it is it is it is also meant to give refuge to people who are persecuted minorities in the countries which are in which they are persecuted. I right. mean, and, you know, the fact that the Hindu population in Pakistan uh, continues to suffer week after week, uh, day after day. Uh, this is a this is a way uh, for the Hindus there to seek uh, refuge and to uh, to come to a place that is safe for them and to, uh, for safe for their children. Yeah. Um, and you I think you realize uh, you have twenty three percent population that, of a country reduced to less than a percent in Pakistan. You have yeah, two point no, 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 eight uh, million Sikhs who were living in nineteen forty seven. Today they are six thousand one hundred and forty three, according to their own official data. What happened to all the Sikhs? What happened to all the Jews is a famous exactly. word of a, uh, a UN representative of Israel who asked the Arab countries, where are your Jews? So we asked the same thing to Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, where are your Jews? 
There are zero Jews in Bangladesh that they wanted to include in this resolution. There are 150 and, some uh, uh, actually, in, in Pakistan and one in Afghanistan. And actually, that is where uh, that the is last where Pakistani it, Jewish uh, 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 also left Pakistan a couple of years ago, and yeah. so did the last Afghan Jew uh, yeah, left yeah. Afghanistan. But see, what is what is really interesting in this whole conversation is that uh, this is this is a changing of the tide, I must say, and this is this is turning the tide back from what was a, a falsehood-based uh, narrative building in America, and I think what. Dr. Barai and Amitabh Mittalji just pointed out, it is not the last of it that we have seen. I can assure you that we will see more of this in other cities because of the nature of the organizations that we are up against. At the same time, I believe, and I think we all believe, those of us who are listening to us, we all believe that we will be able to counter them from now onwards much more efficiently because now we have seen how it is done. And, and in many other cities, I must warn people, it, you know, just because in Chicago it was Council for American Islamic Relationships doesn't mean that every other place it will be the same organization, but it will be certainly a group of organizations that are well connected to each other, that have the same agenda, and that have the same goal of maligning Hindus in America as much as they are interested to malign India as a country. So one more thing I wanted to add to this conversation is that in this entire uh, discussion, we saw that it was about CAA, which is the, the Citizenship Amendment Act that Amitabhji was pointing out. But in previous res resolutions and in future resolutions, I must add, they will try to keep adding more and more things because it is not just about CAA, it is about Hindus and India. So whatever they can grab at, they will pull in Kashmir, they will pull in... You, you never know. They might really? actually go, go back all the way to 1947 to put yeah, something out of their behind. So, the, so the, they're already uh, adding farmers' yeah. issues to this. Exactly. So it no, is no, no, they, they, in they, the kitchen sink, right? I mean, yeah. anything, any news item, anything that happens. They, they added uh, NRC to this. They added uh, uh, farmers' bill latest to it. And they talked about the 370-35A. That, that was already packaged in there. Yeah, so, yeah. It, so it started so, with CAA. It evolved, 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 evolved. You see everything added to this because there, there's yeah. a template where there is a, you can keep adding uh, subsections to it, and that's all they're doing right now. And that is why I because asked the, the real target. The real target is really Hindus in yeah. America and the next generation of Hindus in America. It has nothing to do with CA. It has nothing to do with India. And I am a uh, Indian American Muslim Council and CARE have decided that they are going to tear down Hindus and everywhere they find. And they're taking, uh, you know, and, 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 and we have talked about uh, this in past. I mean, they're, uh, they're you know, uh, they're, they're behind a lot of the anti-Hindu activities that are going on in, uh, in America. Um, I, I also want to, uh, Amitabhji, I want to uh, please stay online. We want to move on to the next topic, which also you will find interesting. And that is the good news of the week. As we introduced this uh, news segment a few weeks ago, and we always share, uh, and we will talk, we ran out of time this time, but we'll talk about more in detail next week on this. Uh, but this is certainly another good news of the week. Um, I should, uh, I, I, miss, uh, I misspoke here. I should have said, New York swastika bill withdrawn. Oh, uh, spelling mistake. That's what happens when you do things live. My spelling uh, skills are tested. Uh, but uh, New York swastika bill, for most of you who know about this, we've been talking about this in the show, uh, that New York uh, State Senate had brought this bill last year and was going to bring, and they uh, they're trying to bring it back this year. Uh, I believe it is resolution 2727, if I remember correctly. This was to designate swastika, news, and some other symbols as hate symbols and teach in schools uh, that these are the symbols of hate. Now, the Hindu community in New York, um, and including Hindu PAC and Kona and some of the other Hindu organizations uh, got together, uh, HSS, a lot of other organizations, a lot of Hindu organizations got together and really started this campaign that said, look, Hitler never used the word swastika. We did a whole show for an hour on this. Hitler always used the word Hakenkreuz or the crooked cross. And to, come, to say that swastika was used by Hitler to begin with is factually wrong. Swastika has been a symbol of uh, sacredness, of good, uh, you know, for a very long time in many, many different cultures. 
and there's a need to disassociate Hakan Cruz from Swastika. And after a lot of effort from a lot of Hindu organizations, including Hindu Pact and Berlin Council of America or VHPA, uh, this particular bill was withdrawn because again, it was a divisive bill. It was a bill that was meant to divide uh, the uh, Hindu community from the Jewish community, although that was not the stated intention of it, that was going to be the end result. So uh, Senator Kaminsky was the author of the bill. We had a meeting with him. We had a meeting with uh, Senator Thomas and other people, and they eventually they saw it that you know, but saw that what we were saying was actually really true. That this are, these are the kinds of bills uh, that uh, you know uh, really are not good for interfaith relations. They're not good for Hindu kid who's going to school and whose friends come to visit and they see a symbol swastika in their house. This is not good for communal harmony in America. And eventually, this particular bill was withdrawn. So that is the good news of the week. Uh, any comments, uh, Sada? Any comments, Amitabhji, before I move to the next segment? Uh, I think I, we need an educational uh, part on this swastika issue. There have been people who have been uh, our uh, uh, Hindu Americans who have suffered because of this misunderstanding of, you know, I'm not belittling it, but because of this uh, 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 promotion or narrative that the swastika is the Nazi symbol, Hock and Cruz, um, a lot of Hindus, business owners, uh, uh, small retail shop owners, uh, who end up getting some product from Bharat, which has the swastika symbol on it, uh, ridiculed. Even uh, there are uh, there was a news story some years back in Indiana. Uh, NBC reporter, uh, she went into the Indian store. She used to go there all the time. And one time she goes there, she sees this uh, wall decoration which had the swastika on it, which is very auspicious to us. Uh, next thing you know, she puts it on the news and says, uh, this store is uh, promoting uh, hate towards Nazis, uh, towards uh, Jews, and uh, 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 Jews should avoid this store. I mean, that is creating a divide amongst uh, Hindu and Jewish community and creating a misunderstanding of Hindu dharma uh, with, with the Jewish community. And that kind of thing happens a lot. And we have to come up with a, a program where we educate on regular basis what swastika is and do not use the word swastika for the Nazi Hakan Cruz symbol. Exactly. Very well put. Um, Moving on to the next segment, our Hindu Seva Charity Act of the Week. So here is the intro music for that, and then we talk a little bit about the Hindu Seva Act of the Week. <laughs> And I want to uh, I want to nominate uh, the Seva Charity Act of the Week as Support a Child, a project of our own uh, Baltimore Council of America. Yesterday, for those who watched it, there's an amazing show called Pancham Redefined. Uh, this was the show uh, that uh, talked about uh, the uh, that had original music composed by uh, this group, uh, Pandit Subhan Chatterjee and his group. And they uh, recast a lot of the, with a lot of the narration, history, they recast the music of Rahul Dev Burman. And uh, this is an amazing, amazing show uh, to do the fundraising for Support a Child. Um, this show is going to be up only for today, and then we are going to uh, take it down. So you can go to our YouTube channel, our Facebook uh, page, and our Twitter channel to watch this for one more day. Uh, again, uh, this show uh, was meant to raise funds for support a child. Last year, the goal was to raise funds for 3,500 children in India, and that goal was met. This year, the goal is to raise funds for 3,900 kids, and we are well on our way. So please, please do go to supportachild.org, S-U-P-P-O-R-T-A-C-H-I-L-D.org, 
and make a donation. It's a really worthy cause. Please, please do donate and enjoy the show. It's going to be up uh, as a replay only for the uh, next few hours. If you have not seen this, you have really missed something. Pancham Redefined, a show um, by Sudan Chatterjee and group. And Utsala, you'll be glad to know there were some Bengali songs also in there. If you missed it, you can go back and watch it. And please, while you're there, uh, make a generous donation. It's only $250 a year. Uh, that's, you know, that's $20 a month. I mean, $21, $22, dollars $21 a month, not even. So please uh, open your wallets, open your hearts and donate. You can support more than one child, uh, but it's, it's a really, really worthy cause. Uh, anything uh, you want to add, uh, Amitabhji, Soda? No, support a child is very near to, again, our heart. Uh, due to COVID, we were not able to hold our uh, annual fundraising for COVID, but Chicago still sends the support uh, in the numbers where it matters, the checks will be going out from Chicago. Uh, all the donors we have contacted, our uh, uh, Sanjay Vaisha and Anita Shah, who are responsible for managing the Support a Child project in Chicago, are working really hard on this. And uh, yes, um, and uh, you said about the Bengali, you cannot have Rahul Dev Burman songs without any Bengali songs in this. That's doesn't, Sorry. you know, that's automatic. That's automatic. <laughs> <laughs> And and I would say I just realized Usilda looks like a little bit like Rahul then. So and there you go. So, <laughs> <laughs> you have that look. <laughs> hey, I, I want to move on to the I want to move on to the I, I have to take a break. I I mean uh, Yes, uh, we're, we're going to talk about a little bit about Chicago. If you want to stand there okay. for another 30 Quickly. seconds, okay. uh, you will like this. Uh Amitabhji, you will definitely uh you like what we're gonna say next, and that is uh, we give a, a drum roll um, uh, to the next segment. The Hindu Phob of the Week. The Hindu Phob of the Week. Um, this one is a strange one. And it's a really sad one. Uh, so the, uh, you want to probably talk about this because I think um, you, are, you are considered uh, for this particular one you are actually considered somewhat local. So uh, tell us about what happened to, uh, tell us about what happened when uh, uh, Hindu Pact and uh, uh, VHPA tried to join the, uh, tried to join the rally on violence against Asian Americans. Now remember, we did a show, entire show on violence against Asian, Asian Americans a week before the Atlanta event, because we saw the trends and we did this show. And then Indian community, uh, there was an event in your home state. Please take it from here. And then Amitabh ji, please add uh, a couple of words on this. Uh, go ahead, Utsada. Well, you know, this, this uh, unfortunately uh, also brings in our usual uh, suspect in the game here, which is Council for American Islamic Relations uh, Care, uh, our quote unquote friends from the Muslim Brotherhood who really love to hate us. Uh, so the rally Stop Asian Hate Rally was held on March 24th, uh, 2021 in Columbia, which is a, which is a small uh, suburb of Washington DC and Baltimore. So it lies right between Washington DC and Baltimore, has a very uh, thriving uh, community with a lot of Asian population, including Indian Americans, uh, very diverse. And uh, in the, in the rally was organized uh, partially by uh, a bunch of coalition of different organizations, which included Muslim organizations, Christian organizations, Jewish organizations, and of course, Indian Cultural Association, uh, which was led by uh, Sanjay Shivasta, which, is, which, is, which was also trying to participate in it. And it so happened that Hindu Pact, which, you know, like many other religious uh, based organizations of uh, Asian communities, was uh, interested to join it because we genuinely support uh, the situation that that needs to be amended here where Asian Americans uh, are facing discrimination and often physical attack, violent, violent physical attacks. So when Hindu Pact approached to join this rally, they were shut out and, and stopped from attending by Council for American Islamic Relations. And I think that is also an indication of how much hate uh, this organization and many of similar Muslim Brotherhood-linked Islamic organizations carry towards 
the Hindu American community and just excluding a, a community which is from Asia from a rally in support of Asians is itself, uh, you know, an extreme show of bigotry and, and, and hatred and to get away with it is even worse. So I think uh, a lot of Indian American organizations and a lot of American Hindu organizations are, are coming together to expose this bigot bigotry that is being promoted by some of these Islamist groups. And uh, Sanjay Shivasto, who is the president of Indian Cultural Association of Howard County, has been uh, very aggressively and rightly so uh, reaching out to lawmakers who carry a proper conscience, hopefully. And we are trying to make sure, and in, I'm personally not playing as much of a role in it yet as many of the members of our local community are. But uh, you should thank Mahendra Sapa ji for taking the lead in this. Yes, Mahendra Sapa, who is who is the leader of uh, our World Hindu Council of America in the Washington D.C. region, he has been uh, spending uh, hours and hours of efforts to to educate people and to share the this kind of discrimination within the community. And I think something good will come out of it. More importantly, uh, there will be increased awareness within the communities right. in Maryland about and, the history. We should compliment uh, Indian Cultural Association there. Yes, yes. So uh, Sanjay Shivastav, as I mentioned, uh, the president of Indian Cultural they agree, they agree in support for Hindu Pact. So Amitabh ji, any final words before we close out the day? Yeah. Quickly, quickly wanted to say that, that uh, in their hate, they are now breaking laws. They have just broken the First Amendment rule. Uh, discrimination on the basis of religion has been committed here. And uh, I had a conversation with Sanjay ji last night. I had a conversation with Mahindra ji. Uh, this is, this is uh, breaking the law, breaking the U.S. Um, uh, First Amendment. Uh, and, and that means these people have no respect for the U.S. laws. Do the U.S. Uh, uh, leadership want to be associated with people who have no respect for the, 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 the Constitution of the United States in their hate? for another, a, a, a very peaceful, very contributing uh, community in these United States. Every sixth doctor is an Indian origin doctor and 99.9% .9 a Hindu doctor. Uh, I want uh, to remind people and we, we keep forgetting on September 11th, 10% of the people who were killed by the Islamic terrorists were Indian Hindus, 289, their names are itched in the wall over there uh, in New York at the ground zero. But 289 out of 2,900 people were Indian Hindus who were killed that day. Um, what Our silence is taken as cowardice and I think we should not stay silent anymore. And it, it, shame on, shame on these, uh, this county officials and the people. And of course, definitely they are Hindu phobic, there are the you, you have the apt word for them. The Hindu phobe of the week is the the county administration of uh, Harold County, who objected to participation of uh, Hindu PAC and Vishwa Hindu Parishad as uh, um, in this rally. Thank you, Amitabh ji. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, we come to a close on today's uh, program. Uh, thank you, Amitabh ji, for joining. Thanks, uh, please come there. Thanks to Dr. Barai, Utsada, Maya. Thank you for Thank joining you. and namaste. And we Namaskar. Enjoy Namaskar. Music. Uh, Thank you again, everyone.